The budget deal that wasn't. The president and Republican congressional leaders failed to hammer out a deal that would prevent $85 billion in budget cuts. The first slashes in military spending and employee furloughs. And that's just the beginning. ABC's Rena Nainen has the latest details from the White House. Good morning, Rena. Good morning to you, Bianca. Congressional leaders met here at the White House on Friday, but senior administration officials saying there was nothing new, no negotiations. Sequestration was meant to force congressional leaders into acting on reducing the budget. That didn't happen. It's official. Overnight, President Obama signing orders to start $85 billion in across the board spending cuts. It's just dumb and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt individual people and it's going to hurt the economy uh, overall. This White House press conference would have been framed as just another dust up between the president and Republican opponents until Mr. Obama seemed to mix up this quip. People agree I'm presenting a fair deal. The fact that they don't take it means that I should somehow do a Jedi mind meld with these folks and convince them. Uh, to do what's right. For those who didn't catch it, the president seemed to confuse Star Trek's Vulcan mind melt with Star Wars Jedi mind trick. But whether President Obama is really the Vulcan in chief, most illogical, or the Republic's first Jedi, these cuts will do anything but bring balance to the force. Right at midnight tonight, we will begin curbing training for units. And as early as Monday, some federal employees could be beamed down on furloughs. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Many experts believe the dark side hasn't won out just yet. The feds are fighting off the direst consequences, like airline backups due to fewer air traffic controllers. An FAA official estimates furloughs won't begin until April. Republicans say the president won't cut entitlements. It's about uh, taking on the spending problem here in Washington. While the president says he can't just go Darth Vader on the other side. I am not uh, a, a dictator. I can't have Secret Service block the doorway. As for the sci-fi mix-up, the White House sent out this tweet poking fun, and the man who played Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, tweeted, only a Vulcan mind melt will help this Congress. The next budget deadline comes in just a matter of weeks. Dan? We're going to thank you. I'm not even sure uh, a Vulcan mind melt will work on this Congress. Let's bring in a ringer now. His name is John Avalon. He's a senior columnist at Newsweek and the Daily Beast. John, good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, John, good morning to you. And you know, what's so frustrating for Americans is that these budget cuts were self-imposed to be so dire that neither side would allow them to happen. Yet here we are. They happen. Why can't these two parties come together? It, it, this is what's so frustrating. We've known about this for 16 months and that there was no action in Congress this week. Look, I, I think fundamentally we have a different problem. We've had divided government in the past. We've got a lot of great things done, from the Marshall Plan to all the accomplishments of the Reagan era. What's different now is the parties are so polarized that there aren't the kind of conservative Democrats or progressive Republicans that used to exist that could form coalitions when there was divided government. So you have this kind of gridlock, you have the stalemate, and the American people are paying the price literally today. But what about the argument that these budget cuts are a good thing? Everybody agrees the American government needs to tighten its belt, and this is a start. Right. The problem is that, as Bianca said, these were designed to be so dumb, so painful, such broad, deep cuts, that they would compel Congress to be smart and find a way to work together. There is, it, it's the old scalpel versus machete metaphor. It's overused, but there's a rationale to it. We do. There are places we can cut. We should cut inefficient programs. These broad, deep cuts end up affecting some programs disproportionately, ends up cutting things that work, as in along with things that don't work. And that's why everyone in Congress says they don't want this to happen, but here we are, paralyzed. And, and what we have is a high-stakes political game of poker. The question is who's going to blink first and come up with a grand bargain, which is what we really need to deal with our deficit and debt. All right. Sorry, John Evelyn, who knows uh, if that grand bargain will ever be struck, but we Let's appreciate hope. you coming on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, guys. John.